Hello YouTube, this is Stick152. So this video is going to be going over uh, utilizing some of the components from my uh, Radiation Zone Toolbox uh, Unity Asset. I'm going to be going over the different type of Radiation Zones, um, implementing the Geiger counter and dosimeter, as well as using the Radiation Receiver, and showing the usage of the datum for the for the zone. In this case I'm just going to do it with a spherical zone. <coughs> so what we got in the level here, I've got a, a player character set up. Um, I've got a couple of basic basic scripts. So I've got a, a very uh, basic demo mouse look and player move script. They don't do anything fancy. Feel free to use them if you want, but like I said, they don't do anything fancy. Um, and then uh, the demo player manager just kind of uh, this subscribes to the events that are broadcast by the radiation receiver and it just takes off the health. So essentially all this, this demo player does is, you know, once your health falls below 100, it, it kills you and stops the level. Um, okay, so and you'll notice there's a health bar value image here that's set to none, and that's because we don't have the UI on there yet. So first things first, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to prefabs, and I'm gonna add my UI holder. And under UI holder, I've got a couple of things here. I've got a health bar, and I've got a disseminator badge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the player, and under that demo player manager, that health bar value image, I'm going to get that trough, and you can see that this is set as a filled, so it'll set a fill amount. So essentially you just drag that guy on there, and that's it for that. And then we have our dosimeter badge. So let's go ahead and on the player object, because the dosimeter is clipped to the player, so we're going to go ahead and go to our scripts folder and we'll go ahead and drag a dosimeter script onto there as well. So now it has a max, max badge dose and so in this case the badge that I have that I provide is uh, it's in millisieverts and it goes from a thousand to ten thousand millisieverts. The effect threshold, that's the effect at which radiation will start to change the color of the badge. Uh, on the, the radiation receiver also has this value and essentially it's when to start processing radiation damage uh, or radiation dosage uh, and, and we don't want background radiation of like you know 0 0.2 microsieverts to be killing the player uh, because our bodies are able to usually process that and deal with it so okay your dose uh, your dosimeter background color uh, that is the uh, for the background color thing so you go to this badge and if you look at the dosimeter badge, there's this strip that's going to be in there, and that is here. You have a color mask, and then there is a color uh, image that sits behind that and gets masked off. And what we're changing is the color property of that. So that's what it's wanting. Uh, you just take that and drag that onto there. Now you can set the from and the two colors that you're going to lurk between. So in this case, our dosimeter badge goes from white to black. It could be anything, though. I mean, it, it uh, well. You can set it to whatever you want. The, this dosimeter script is, is customizable. Uh, you can customize it to what your badge does. Um, so the color change speed, that's how fast it lerps between those values, and that's just the default is 0.05, and that usually works fine. Okay, so that's all that there. And now we need the radiation receiver so that we can actually get radiation damage. So we have 10,000 is our lethal cumulative dose, and there again, I'm, I'm defaulting to millisieverts. And our effect threshold, and explained that before. Radiation effect scalar, that's how fast it affects you. Uh, at 0 0.01, 0 0.001, it's going to be fast. Uh, so, you know, that's a little bit better, uh, but you're probably going to want to do, uh, do that guy there. Radiation protection enabled. So this is what you would use, like say you equip your player with a, a radiation suit, then you would enable that. And then when that's enabled, you have a protection factor. Now that value, that protects you up, like in this case, it would protect you up to 500 millisieverts. Uh, you could set it 1,000, 2,000, whatever, based on the effectiveness of the radiation suit that they have. So like if all they have is, uh, you know, cotton clothing, long sleeve shirt, pants, you know, uh, uh, bandana, something like that, then you can have a, a lower protection factor or none. Uh, if they have a really high-end radiation suit, you can set it. You can scale it based on that. Uh, say your suit gets damaged, you can drop that factor down. Uh, or if it gets, you know, shredded, you can just disable it completely. In this case, I'm just going to leave it disabled so we can see the functioning of everything. Um, and when this protection uh, value is enabled, um, it does for the dosimeter. 
uh, check that as well, the protection value that you have, uh, so that it knows, um, because you're inside the radiation suit with your badge, uh, so it, it kind of takes on some of that protection as well. Okay, so let's get out of that. Next thing we need is a Geiger counter, and so I already have one positioned because it's kind of a uh, getting it positioned just right for the camera was was a little bit of a pain, uh, so I didn't want to bore you guys with that. Um, so you can see here with the Geiger counter script, I'll go ahead and, and remove these and then add them back in so you can see how they're added. So I'm going to remove that. Okay, so this is what you would normally end up with when you use the prefab. There's a Geiger counter prefab here, and it comes with a rigid body, um, you know, set as kinematic, and then a, a box collider that just goes around it. Uh, so just some basic stuff. And uh, so when you add that to your player, that's what you get. So now we're going to go and we'll take this uh, Geiger counter script and put that on there. Now you see it creates an audio source because there wasn't one. And it, and it actually gives the default. It'll set it up with some defaults so it doesn't play on awake and such like that. You still need to add the audio to it. So we'll add our click there. And I want to turn it up because it needs to be a little louder. Okay. And then back on there. Uh, so now it's going to want some, some basic stuff. So where's the output text? And so for this output text, I have a canvas for you. Uh, so you can output and uh, display onto that. So you just drag that text item there. And essentially that is this text right here, that, that part of this canvas that's on there. Uh, and then your power button I've got set as text as well. I didn't make it part of the model, like part of the material, because if, if you wanted to use like the power button symbol or if you wanted to do it in a different language or something, you know, you should be able to do that. I don't, I don't want to constrain you, you know, to having a model that's only in English. Okay, so let's get back out here. So what else we need to do? So we're going to look at the display units. Now the display unit is what it's currently displaying in. And it's a conversion factor. There's a conversion lookup table that looks at the default dosage unit. So the default dosage unit should match all of the radiation zones in your level. Um, all of those, lo uh, uh, I can't talk. All of those zones should be the same display unit or the same dosage unit. Otherwise you can get you know, some disparate readings and such. So you want to keep them all the same, whether you're using millisieverts, rems, uh, grays, whatever, they should all be the same. And then you set the, the Geiger counter to the same default unit. And then the display unit is the, is the current. So as you switch between all these different uh, units, it will do a conversion uh, between that value. So I have a lookup table that, that it uses to find the, the conversion factor to, to, to change those, those uh, values. Okay, so the display panel material. Uh, I have an emissive panel, so when you turn it on and off, that actually has like the, it simulates a lighted panel. So what we do is we actually go to the materials, so under prefabs materials, and we find the Geiger counter display, and we put that on there. And then now we pick the color we want it to shine, and in this case I like the green. So we just set that on there. So when you start the level, that'll turn green. Okay, so for the Geiger counter, for now to be able to switch between, like to turn it off and on, or to switch the different display units, uh, you got to have an input manager script. So what happens is, is the Geiger counter script itself, it actually has uh, Unity events that are invoked that, that do the different things, that turn it on and off, and that, that change its display units. This, dis this uh, input manager, I have it there just as an example. And I've already got it preset up. You know, it defaults to these text values. So you would need to go to the Edit, player, uh, Project Settings, Inputs, and then create these components. Now, the reason I did it the way that I did it, the reason it's event-driven, is so that you're not pigeonholed or you know forced into using the default Unity Input Manager. So if you use one of the the other ones that are available on the Asset Store, or if you've made your own, then all you have to do is just invoke the 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 methods that are inside, or the events that are inside the Geiger counter class. <clears throat> and that's, uh, that's essentially all that this does. Okay, so now we can turn it off and on. We can change the readings. We've got sound, um, but there's nothing to detect. So if we play this guy, it's just going to sit there. You know, we can turn it on and off. You know, we can switch it between the different units, but there's nothing. It's just zero, right? Okay, so let's deal with that. So now we need some radiation to detect. Well, uh, we want some background radiation. 
So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put in a special kind of zone. And let's see, inside of this uh, walls here, I'll go ahead and create a another little empty object and we'll call that the isolation zone. Okay, so we'll put this guy on it and we're gonna switch it to isolation. And now you can see the UI changed. And this is like where I was talking about before, setting it the, the dosage unit. So we're gonna set that to millisieverts. And that's the standard background. That's like close to the average, uh, world, worldwide average background radiation. Uh, 0.0002 millisieverts is 0.2 microsieverts. Uh, so uh, I have it kind of defaulting to use that. Uh, so let's go ahead and scale this guy up a little bit. So that it encompasses this this level. Switch up to the top view here. Okay. Yeah, and I want. And uh, we're going to put a different kind of zone in here in just a second. So I want it to kind of overlap a little bit on this. There we go. That should work. Okay. So now I have a background zone. Let's switch over here so we can make it tall enough. Alrighty. There we go. Okay, so now if we play it, now you can hear it kind of just doing some random slow ticks because it's got that background radiation that it is picking up. All right, so we're good to go there. Uh, so now I want to set it up to where if I exit this room, this is, a, we're gonna call this like a safe zone and everything outside of this, we could say, like I want to design a map to where anything outside of this bunker uh, is radiated. You know, there's radioactive and you know, you just, it's a no-go zone. And if you go out there, you're gonna die. So what I do is I want to create another special zone type and we're going to have this be a background zone and I'll go ahead and create a separate empty object here. Let's call this the background zone. And then we put the same rect component on there, but this time we switch it to background. And uh, you notice it's a little bit different here. So it's background dosage amount. It defaults to having just the, you know, the background dosage as everything else does. Uh, so you could, like say you wanted your level to have, you know, uh, a, just a border that where players can't go outside a certain zone on the map. Otherwise, you know, you, the way you constrain them in the area of the map is through radiation. Uh, you can have the background dosage a small amount and then the radiation on exit would be really high, like in, uh, you know, 10,000 millisieverts, that's a fatal dose. <coughs> And then, uh, you know, so you could do it that way. But in this case, I want to have that really high. So as soon as you leave the isolation zone, then you're going to get hit with this. Now, if you tried to do this without the isolation zone, you'd be constantly getting 10,000 millisieverts. And we don't want that. Let's go ahead and scale this guy up here. Back up to the top view. Okay, so... Now, because of the nature of this, because we have that isolation zone, all we have to do is make it just a little bigger than our map, or than our, than our area. And now we don't have to do anything. We don't have to set up a whole bunch of different uh, you know, zones or anything like that. You just basically set this thing on there, and as soon as you exit this, then blammo, you're hit with you know, a whole bunch of radiation. Okay, so now as a transition, Let's, let's look at it like this. Okay, so we're going back in. And now you can see we're still only getting that point 0.2. But now if we try to leave, as soon as we leave the isolation zone, we're going to be hit with the background. And let's see. Yeah, and it's just a really fast transition. And we don't want that. Okay. So to make it smoother, I have another specialized zone. And this is called the rect ramp. So that's a rectangular ramp zone. So we'll go ahead and we'll create us a new object as part of this walls. Okay, and let's go ahead and move this guy right over here. 
Alrighty, and then we're going to add this ramp zone to it. Now this is a very specialized zone. It doesn't have the selector for any other different types. It's just a single purpose uh, zone. It's really designed for one particular thing. Okay, so what we can do is we can come over here. Let's make that just a little bit shorter because we don't want to... Okay, so now we got the size of the length there. Let's go ahead and make that wide enough so that we don't we can't skip out of it. Okay. Alrighty. And it doesn't have to be the full height because we're, you know, as long as as long as whatever's going through it fits in it, that's the main thing. But now the datum is pointed the wrong way. Uh, so we want to make sure that it's going down in this case the negative x axis. So we do a negative one there and then a zero there. So now you grab that and you drag it back to where you want the maximum dose to be. So in this case, if we look at uh, our background zone, it's out there a ways, that's fine. Um, and then we look at our isolation zone. Well, our isolation zone in here and our ramp zone, we want to say it should come back here from the edge. And, you know, we should start getting irradiated maybe a little further in right here. The main thing is making sure that the the isolation zone overlaps, making sure there's a significant overlap because as soon as you leave the isolation zone you're going to get hit with that radiation. So, okay. Alrighty. Okay, so now what we got to do is we have to say the dosage beyond the datum. Now this value should match what you're going into. So in this case the background zone is 10,000 so the ramp zone, the dosage beyond the datum, needs to match that as well. Oop. Okay. Alrighty, so let's give that a try. There you go, now we get a smooth ramp up. And if you'll notice the dosimeter is slowly ramping as well, up to that amount. There you go. All right. All right, so we're good there. So now let's see, look at one of the other zones. So now I've got this radioactive barrel here, this toxic barrel. And I want to put a spherical zone around that barrel. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a sphere and pop that on there. Now, if you'll notice, this didn't have a sphere collider, so it added one for me. It checks, it checks for colliders, and then it checks to see if there's a trigger. If one of those colliders was already a trigger, then it would be okay. It would say, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, but, it but since there wasn't, it went ahead and added one. And uh, I'm going to make this pretty powerful here. So it's going to be, you know, uh, it's going to have a little bit of a reach here. There we go. And then the inner zone where it's the hottest, that's going to be a little bit bigger. There we go. And then we're going to say the maximum dosage for that, let's say 400. It's really radioactive. Okay. And now you'll notice that this uh, there's a dosage beyond datum value, and we have that set to zero. Well, the way that it's uh, pointed right now, we wouldn't be able to do anything with that because that axis is up at the top, right? So we're going to look at it like it is. Now there's another flag here of note that's called clings to objects. This is really useful when you have something like a puddle or a pool or something. And in my in my other video uh, that demos the demo scene, um, there's a radioactive puddle in there that uh, if you step in it, it will cling to you. And as you leave the zone, uh, even though you're not being exposed to any other radiation, because it's clinging to you and you set this time to a value, it'll keep uh, applying this amount of radiation to you for this amount of seconds. So, anyway, uh, so let's try it as it is. Now we've got this big concrete wall here, right? But, you see, I can, uh, I'm, I'm picking up radiation. Well, that's a big thick concrete wall, and I don't want that, right? I, I don't, I don't want to be exposed to radiation on this side of the wall. So, what I do is I use this datum. Well, that's pointing down the negative z-axis. So let's go ahead and set that to zero, and then we're going to set this to negative one. Okay, and then I want to bring that datum back to just on the other side of that wall. And now let's try it. 
Now you can see I don't get any radiation until I'm right there. Now I start getting radiation. And then, you know, back all the way over here. I can go way back. Now, because, because it's such a high amount and it's such a small sphere, uh, the delta is pretty high. Uh, so it, it changes really rapidly. Um, if you if you want to if you want to make that a little easier, you can just scale this bigger, or you can set it to a lower value. But so that's what the datums do. Um, let's see. I, I do want to show you like on the on the datums. One of the it's kind of a coolness factor thing. It's not really anything uh, practical. Let's go to the uh, the ramp zone. So one of the things about that, and this took me a little while to figure out how to do, if you take these datums and if they're pointed like an angle, that'll hug that. And so you get, you know, it, and, it, and it works on all those different shapes and, and positions. And it's, there's a lot of, uh, there's some, basically some ray casting. I check for uh, line intersection, you know, line plane intersections uh, to verify where you are in this. Um, so, and it, and, it, and it really seems to work very well. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, so, you know, now we have a, a full level utilizing radiation and all drag and drop. Uh, very, very few uh, settings to put in, no programming. And uh, yeah, so, all right, that's it. And um, I will put a link to the uh, asset store uh, when it's when it's posted to the asset store. I'll I'll put a link to that down in the description, um, and then also once I get the forum page built with instructions. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to place them place them down in there, and I'll uh, I try to reply as uh, as soon as possible. But uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate you watching.